Well, happy Friday, everybody. We have made it to the end of the week, and uh, here we are. I'm um, excited to be with you guys today. Uh, today I'm recording from outside. As you can tell, I'm in the car. It's not going down the road. As you can see, the tree behind me. I'm just sitting here, um, just come back from uh, a, a breakfast uh, with my mentor. And anyways, uh, so I just figured might as well, uh, if, if Pastor Jack can do a, a Devo from a hospital bed, then I can do one from a car because, well, I like cars better than hospital beds. So anyhow, uh, let's get into today's piece of scripture. Uh, this is coming to you from Psalms 139, uh, verse, verses uh, 13 through 14. And it says this, You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside, and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking, it simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. Well, that's an interesting uh, verse. I think we've we've probably, some of us, or maybe a lot of us have heard that verse before, used uh, uh, to um, kind of support a particular divide in some uh, theological arguments uh, and, and some uh, ethical arguments in the world today. But we're... I don't really think we need to go down that path. I, I actually I see some other stuff in this verse that I think it would be really good to talk about, and and part of that is it's kind of interesting that you know it talks about the mother's womb, and it reminds me of um, I think everybody's mom was probably like this. You know, you're in another room and you're doing something, and you're probably doing something that you probably shouldn't be doing, but all of a sudden your mom screams out to you. You better not be doing blah, 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 whatever that thing is that you know that you're not supposed to be doing. And sure enough, you're probably doing that thing. And she knows. And you're just like, what? How does my mom, does she have like eyes in the back of her head? How does she, or, or eyes in this room? Like, how does she know what's going on wherever it is that I'm doing? But she knows. Or sometimes, you know, it would happen that you might would be out with friends and uh, maybe in your teenage high school years and uh, you come home and you've been doing things that you weren't supposed to be doing. And somehow your mom or maybe even your parents, uh, maybe your dad's in on this too, uh, but they would know. They would know exactly what you'd been up to and doing. And, that, you know, even without text and social media and now for me as a kid, I my parents had one of those fancy radios where they could hear the, what was going on with the police and and th and there was a time when um, I did come home from some place that I wasn't supposed to be, and and they knew about that place that I wasn't supposed to be at. And um, when they asked me, I had to tell them, "Yep, I was there." But I was I was there before the police got there. Like that made it better. But uh, somehow they knew that I was there. So anyhow, but that being the 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 aspect of being known, like to know you so well that they know your actions, they know what you're going to be doing or what you were doing or uh, you know what you're even thinking about doing um, another story that's kind of similar is um, I remember sitting down with my great grandfather and my my grandfather uh, Tolleson and both of them being the Tolleson men and uh, sitting and, and uh, if you're my aunt or my grandma watching this you'll know exactly what I'm talking about uh, but these men um, had this uncanny ability if you're sitting down playing dominoes with them, to know exactly what domino was in your hand. And they would tell you, uh, based on the play, what domino you have and what your choices were to play, and then if you made such and such choice, that uh, they would play something else that would counter it and make them more points. And it was just amazing that they had all this stuff worked out. And and I know people, you know, there's a there's a TV show on Netflix that uh, the, ga the Queen's Gambit, and, um, you know, it's kind of the same type of thing, just kind of knowing all the intricacies of what's going on and being able to make decisions based on that forethought knowledge. And so this verse really kind of brings that out a lot, that that here is God that has that knows every cellular piece of my body as it has was made then and is made today 
because it's a shock to you, the cells that are in your body today are not the ones that were there when you were in your mother's womb. I believe it's something along the lines of every cell in your body is replaced. Uh, like you have a whole new body every seven years or some number like that. It may be less than that, but it's a certain amount of time frame. All the cells in your bodies, you know, die off and new ones are born and replaced. And uh, I say born, uh, but, you know, the cellular regeneration and... Um, so anyhow, but this idea that in this process of being made, that God knows us down to that level. But not just our physical, but also every mental decision that we make, every choice that is put before us, God knows those too. And here's the thing of the psalmist brings out in this is, everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. So here we are, and and how we sometimes feel broken. Maybe we are broken in some cases, as I mentioned before. You know, a little while ago, Jack doing a Devo, and having been in an accident, was somewhat broken in that time. And, and I know lots of people at the church that are broken physically. But even in those moments, we are still so marvelously breathtaking because we are God's creation. Just think on that for a moment. It's it's amazing today, and, and I think being on this side of COVID that we've been in this COVID place for so long, that as when we went into it, there was this thought, uh, everything kind of came to a screeching halt. And in that halt, in that pause, in that waiting, in that stillness, we had to stop and take a collective breath. <laughs> Funny thing about breathing and COVID, right? But in that moment of pausing, miracles became miracles again. Things were miraculous again. I can remember... You know, uh, the the first time of uh, really that gap of not being able to see people at church, uh, the the gap of really not even seeing them in person because we, we stayed in our homes for a while. But when we did get to venture out and, and everything, it was shocking. And maybe it was not necessarily appropriate. But that next time that I got a hug from someone, that was like a miracle. It felt like a miracle. It felt new. It felt amazing to to reach out and be able to touch someone uh, and be intimate in that, you know, that type of relationship and, and to get that hug and to feel that warmth again of somebody uh, that is a friend, you know, that in, that Zoom just doesn't do for you. And, and me, I'm a techie person. I, I like technology and I'm glad that we are using it the way that we do and the way that we are and maybe maybe even using it more in different places in our life on a more normal aspect, uh, letting that become so much of a, of a normality again. Uh, but to not displace and not misplace our concept of what a miracle is. You know, these days babies are born and and people go to the hospital and are healed and 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 some of that has been kind of like over normalized like like it's not a miracle anymore and 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 saying all this what i'm really trying to to understand myself and maybe for you to understand too is every breath that we have is a miracle everything about us is a miracle it, Jesus rising from the dead was still a miracle. Granted, it's been 2,000 plus year, or not quite 2,000 years, but it's been you know a long time, and, and we start taking those types of things for granted. We take for granted uh, that moment wherein we are warmed, and uh, or maybe you know in whatever way that you found God and started walking with God, that in that moment it felt like a miracle. And then as the days go on and, and life goes on, you, you kind of lose that energy. You lose that concept of how wonderful and miraculous that is. 
But there is joy in this still. Because how thoroughly known are we by our Creator? Every day He is willing to do miracles in our lives. We just have to pause and sit still long enough to see them. To have our hearts changed so that we can experience them again. Like they are the, the new thing again. So, in a different translation, in the in the Christian Standard Bible, this verse is a little shorter, but it says it says this in, in the wording. It says, for it, for it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wondrously made. Your works are wondrous, and I know this very well. So, I'm going to leave you guys with this in a prayer. Continue to praise Him because you have been remarkably and wondrously made. No matter how you feel physically or mentally, you are still miraculously made. Find joy and praise in that. So let us pray. Oh, before we pray, I do have a small announcement. And if you made it this far, 11 minutes into this little Devo, um, I hope you have. I'll put it in the comments, too. We still need things at the church in the food. And there's a food drive with the Boy Scouts. So if you have some non-perishable food that you would like to bring to the church uh, and put in the, the little box outside, that would be awesome incredibly miraculous uh, to say the least. Uh, there are a lot of people that depend on that, um, that are in need of that, and we so thank you for all of those that, that have brought stuff and continue to bring things and and if you if you want to do something that makes a difference then then please bring some, some items to put in there because it is running low these days. Uh, with that let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for today. It is a slightly chilly day, but the sun is still out and our hearts are still rejoiced in this creation that you have set us upon, this creation that you keep alive in us. And God, we give you thanks for your word that we get to study in this scripture that hones us, that guides us, and that delivers us to you. May our rest of our week be blessed as we go about your business of blessing others. And in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I will see y'all on Saturday, uh, maybe Sunday evening. Uh, but y'all have a good one, and I hope you have a good Friday. Take care. Bye.